Hey, everybody, and welcome to InfernoCast, episode 027. I am, of course, Inferno Fox, host of this podcast and of YouTube's Inferno Fox gaming channel. We are here on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Amazon Music, and more. Joining me is my wonderful cast and crew, and we're going to be running over a fun topic for you today. First of all, I'll introduce you to Jamie Owls. And Jamie Owls is my partner and partner in crime. Jamie Owls, thank you for joining us. Hey, thanks for having me here once again. I appreciate it. And thank you as always for joining us. Next up is Jason the 13th of the YouTube channel, Jason the 13th. Jason, thank you so much for joining us. Not a problem. I finally figured out the camera on this laptop at least. Yes. Excellent. My main, my main <laughs> laptop has been in the shop for a month, and I still don't know if it's been touched yet. <laughs> yes, thank you, Micro Center. And no, we are not sponsored by Micro Center. <laughs> no, yet. <laughs> yet. Well, probably not after they hear this. Eh. But oh, our, our, 13th fault. Our, our, our heart will go on. And speaking of heart, Storm Rose Sky... Thank you so much for joining us of the Twitch and YouTube channels of Storm Rose Sky. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. And before I uh, introduce the next guest, Storm, you just had a new video release on your YouTube channel of Storm Rose Sky, right? I did. And this is the top six um, rewatchable movies from the 80s and 90s for me. Um the mummy did not get included in the list because I was having technical issues with the mummy material. And I figured before I go through all the headache and get the YouTube strike where I can't use it, like they did to me with Living Single on one of my more recent videos, eh, it gets an honorable mention, but it was a fun video to do. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I, I had fun watching it and definitely recommend that you check her, her content out for trips down memory lane. And speaking of memory lane and trips that need to be taken, I also want to introduce Simbu Darkfang, level five grandpa and main actor at Basement of the Dead. That again is Basement of the Dead located in Chicagoland, specifically Aurora, Illinois. And Simbu is, of course, the best player at Forkknife BR. Don't fight me on this. Simbu, thank you so much for joining us. Who? Where? What? When? How? Uh, am I in the right place? And I was exactly right about memory lane. Thank you for joining us, Simbu. <laughs> it's always great and fun to be here. And I, I, I like your shirt, by the way. For th those that are tuning in audibly, you have your The Basement Battle, Escape, and Survive shirt. Very nice. Yep, this was a limited edition shirt that we did many, quite a few years ago now for the uh, Harry Potter event um, in downtown Aurora before Doug Warner Brothers slapped everybody with a cease and desist for it. Hey, at least at least we'll always have the shirts and the memories. <laughs> yes. But yeah, d definitely a... a, a... From what I've heard of that event, it was definitely a, a fun time. And again, I'll, I'll reiterate, I definitely recommend checking out Basement of the Dead if you are in the Chicagoland area. And last but not least, we have Astromedes. He's a developer and co-owner of Second Place Games. Astromedes, thank you so much for joining us. Glad to be here talking about games instead of working on them. It's a lot easier. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, I believe it. Uh, and, and speaking of games and Astromedes, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to tag you for this first question. And, and this is going to be interesting because I'm, I'm curious how this will apply to you. Uh, what do you plan to be the first game that you're going to purchase this year? It's a little bit up in the air. I had originally planned to get a uh, risk of rain returns uh, this year, but ended up not uh, getting it la last year instead. Uh, so now I'd probably say I really want to buy Baldur's Gate. I might just bite the bullet and pay full price because obviously this one will be staying at full price for a while. Um, but I... Uh, I've had my eye on a few other, I'm looking for multiplayer games, but nothing I'm really happy with. It probably will end up being Baldur's Gate 3. Nice. 
Yeah, I, I'm the idiot that is, is buying the deluxe physical copy for the PS5. It was a hundred bucks. And again, let me reiterate, I'm an idiot, but it, with with all the accolades and stuff that that it's getting and with it being that sort of real classic turn-based style uh, type RPG, literally more d obviously leaning more D&D-ish, uh, I, I'm definitely curious to to check that out. That'll be Does the oh. physical edition come with a bunch of maps and dice? Uh, yes, actually. I know it comes with maps. I, you know, I'm not uh, quite certain if it comes with dice or not, but I do know that it comes with like maps and, and other stuff like that. It would be cool if it came with like one 20 sided die. I'll cease the Dungeons and Dragons related talk <laughs> See, there. I was say, I don't think it comes with physical dice, but it comes with cosmetic uh, digital dice for uh, your playthrough. That's cool. <laughs> Uh, Simbu, how about you? What game do you plan on buying uh, first thing this year? Well, first planned game, I should say, because we all know I'm probably not going to wait till March to buy my first game this year. But uh, first planned game is South Park Snow Day. Nice. It's already pre-ordered. Excellent. I am glad to hear that. I'm. I've been debating on doing that myself, but i i'll have to i'll have to think about it i mean i say that but i'll probably end up picking it up because i i stick a truth and the the fractured were such good games with this being more action oriented uh e even still that that makes it such a better thing i mean if, if they have to do better than the last action game that i remember playing for south park you know south park 64 right storm <laughs> hmm. yep <laughs> <laughs> i love those we'll South park games <laughs> they're they're so much fun i will say it's interesting oh though God. that they are going with a 3d render like they did for south park 64 so this will this will be a new a little newer and interesting to see how this all plays out absolutely and unfortunately for us it's going to be a heck of a lot cleaner than how south park 64 looked but storm speaking of which uh, what, what game do you plan on purchasing being your first one for the year? Oh, I'm, look, you know, looking at the list because all I had in mind was the Princess Peach game. Um, and of course, the South Park simply reminded me, Durr, I need to uh, get that also pre-ordered. Um, however, John Carpenter's Toxic Commando, because it is John Carpenter's uh, first foray into video game and his first, uh, yeah, his first outing. So I'm a fan of Carpenter's works, of course, as a horror director and all of that. So I'm looking forward to this and see what he can bring to the uh, gaming industry. I forgot that that uh, was a thing. I remember hearing about it a while ago and all the kind of famous quotes from John Carpenter now that he cares more about music and video games <laughs> than movies. So that would be interesting to see. I, I'd be interested in that too. Yep. Yeah. Well, he, he, he's surprised. <clears throat> he's been quoted he's as... I know nothing about it. But, wow. Yeah, yeah, he's I didn't, been quoted I to say he likes uh, to play video games and watch basketball. So... There we go. Interesting. Yeah, you definitely keep us posted on that because I know Jamie Owls uh, will want more and new horror games to, yeah. to be able to play. <laughs> yeah, it's a first person shooter zombie type thing. So I hmm. hmm. look forward to it. Nice. Uh, speaking of Jamie Owls, um, I already bought her her first game of the year, so I guess that technically counts as the first game, and that was the PS5 version of Grand Theft Auto V. Oh. Uh, we had already owned it for, for a few years on the PS4 digitally, and I got uh, annoyed slash angered watching it it take like 30 to 60 seconds for the darn thing to load just so Jamie Owls can go and steal cars, pick up hookers, and get eaten by sharks. <laughs> So I figured, oh, I'll get the PS5 version, and I, I've noticed a, a obviously a very uh, nice increase in speed. So that you know, when Jamie Owls is picking up her hookers, you know, it, it'll be good and quick in both ways. So the the time to hooker value on average has dropped. Yes, that, that is correct. <laughs> As one bar goes down, the other bar goes up, literally. 
Now, so, does that technically count? Because that seems more just like an upgrade. Yeah, it's a it's an upgrade. It's uh it's because the load times are significantly quicker. I've I've noticed that. So it it, it to that end, it, it's a very nice uh, uh upgrade, what have you. Um yeah. Something to keep us busy at least until GTA six come comes out. So Jamie Owls, um, what would be the first game that you would get for the new year? What I would get for myself, I have a couple in mind. Um, the Princess Peach is probably number one on my list. I believe that comes out in March. And um, Alone in the Dark, I think, comes out this month. I have to double check because they're kind of funky on their dates. They keep switching. And, of course, I've mentioned in previous podcasts is the remastered of the first three original Tomb Raider games which comes out on February 14th but maybe that can be a Valentine's Day gift hint hint <laughs> yeah it, 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 I, I, I was going to say that's probably not going to be anything that you'll end up getting yourself yeah that, okay. uh, that, that'll be Valentine's okay. Day <laughs> <laughs> and speaking of Valentine's Day Jason the 13th what is your first game of the year going to be that you're going to buy not, not sure how valentine's day falls into this but uh <laughs> the 13th is be... adjacent to valentine's day <laughs> yeah get it adjacent okay okay but and there's a lot know. of things that uh, happen on friday you know the 13th and valentine's day that jason himself would not approve of but <laughs> <laughs> but Anyways, it's either going to be one of two or both at the same time. That'll be uh, Mario Wonder and or and or Spider Man Two. Nice, yeah, you can't go wrong. On both obviously, both of them being Game of the Year contenders for twenty twenty three in the Jeff Keighley Awards. Fantastic games. I'll end up picking up Spider Man Two for myself when that goes on sale. Uh, probably when it gets down to like, if I'm lucky, it'll be fifty percent off. But we'll we'll see. <laughs> Oh, but today our main topic, though, is about our favorite video game characters. And specifically, I'm going to ask our, our cast and crew here what our top three characters are kind of by genre. Uh, one of the things it, it, with this is developing characters for video games is really interesting since it's up to the game devs to make characters that intrigue and catch you know, the, the audience's attention, which is why so many of them are just, you know, well endowed beauties because shoot, you know, the, the SEX sells. So I, I really give major kudos to devs that can make characters more interesting than that. You know, characters that have enriched storylines, backgrounds, motivations, and, and what have you, or sometimes you got the combination of the two, you got the beauty with excellent character development, you know, Tifa from Final Fantasy seven. And speaking of Tifa, let's jump right into it by picking our three favorite characters within the RPG role-playing game genre. So curious for, I'm going to ask my cast and crew, who are your favorites and why? Do you like the look of the, the character, the, their storyline, their background, what else? And one of the things here is, is as we give, we each give our answers for our top three, bonus points are awarded. And these bonus points are about as much as worth as the ones that Drew Carey gives on whose line is it anyway? And yes, I probably just dated and aged myself by saying the host Drew Carey. But bonus points are, are about as valuable as the ones that he gives out. And these bonus points, of course, is if you can avoid the same video game franchise for your top three. You, you don't have to follow that rule. Gazoom tight. Um, but feel, feel, yeah, feel free to do so. I'm going <laughs> to... And Kazoon tight oh. twice. Yeah, um, right. mute him. Mine mute coming too. Mine coming too. <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> or sometimes For not now. at all. Um, so my let me get my three answers here just to kind of kind of break break the ice here. And I'm gonna I'm gonna go classic RPG, specifically JRPG. Um, um my three picks are Locke from Final Fantasy VI. I'm gonna also say Makoto from Persona 5. And Adol Kristen from the Ease series. And Locke has been my favorite character. I mean, I've got the the 
the game right here, or, or one of the, the six featured. It's been my favorite video game character since I was like 12. So, you know, if you've known me, you've known me that long. It's no surprise to nobody. Uh, I like Makoto from Persona 5 because she's got this uh interesting character arc where the the main the characters themselves as they get to know her actually really dislike her because they think that she's this goody two shoes and then when push comes to shove she gets kind of like pushed to the edge and ends up confronting a, a mob boss and ends up kind of flipping the script on on this good girl act and it was really able to act independently of that like so and really the the character is probably one of the smartest characters in the game and then finally i like adol Kristen just because he's that the embodiment of the silent protagonist but he's a good swordsman and he just you know i, I like the e series and really needs a lot more attention so i'm going to pick on jason the 13th but we're gonna pick on you first who what are your three favorite characters in the RPG genre? <laughs> and why are they all Pokemon? Why are they all Pokemon? Why are they all Pokemon? They all Pokemon? <laughs> no, the only one is Pokemon. <laughs> 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 well, my my favorite Pokemon of all time is Gengar. Um I always I'm partial to all the ghost type Pokemon, but Gengar was the first and pretty much only ghost uh, line in the very original games. So that is by, all, by process of elimination, he is my favorite ghost type from Gen 1. <laughs> but uh, that would be one. Uh, I like uh, Yuffie from Final Fantasy VII. <laughs> uh, I love that she's like a thief and tries to steal the materia first and then ends up kind of being the riff raff and joins up with everyone. And I like Etna from Disgaea. Uh, she has been, I don't know, just something about her character design and the way they did the comedy in the first Disgaea game. It just she grew on me and loved her character ever since. Very nice. It's funny. I I knew two of the three. I, I just didn't know the third witch character from Disgaea that, that you were going to pick. <laughs> <laughs> um, Simbu, how about you? What are your what are your top three in the RPG genre? And this is good. This is going to be fun. I'm, I've been looking forward to this. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to I'm going to go with classic turn based RPG first and kind of more of a turn based action RPG, I guess. Um, but I'm going to go with the cast of South Park, Stick of Truth. I got, you can't just pick one character. They <laughs> all are just fantastic. It's all sure well written. It's all well written and well done. If any, if I really had to narrow it down from Stick of Truth, I'd have to say Kenny. Princess <laughs> Kenny is got to be the funniest <laughs> part of that. Followed closely by Al Gore. Um, and <laughs> And a near third would be the owner of uh, City Walk. <laughs> That's um, awesome. But again, it's it's Matt Parker or Trey Stone, you know, perfect, you know, just it's good. It's just perfect South Park goodness and storytelling along with the crude and irreverent humor. Um, number two, we're going to go with Tally Zora Naraya from Mass Effect. Ooh. Uh, Tally, she's not a main She's not like a, uh, a super main character. She's like a real big support character. She is playable, but she has this, she's this like babe in the woods kind of character. Um, very interesting to see her when she first starts, you know, from, oh, I've got to make this pilgrimage and I don't really know what I'm doing to towards the end where, at all you know heck is breaking loose and she delivers one of the my favorite line my my actual favorite line from the entire series and that is she is slumped over on a on a countertop with a shot glass in front of her and goes tequila salai and dread downs the shot because it's the Ishimaru. It's a no-win situation, and basically everyone's going to die. So <laughs> to see her just deliver that, deliver that line was just amazing. Uh, I got to give Joker from Mass Effect a big uh, shout-out, too, because he's always with that 
you know, dry and very, you know, belittling humor that just is hilarious. <laughs> um, and my third, we're going to go with Natsu Dragneel from the fairy tale video game. <laughs> hmm. Um, that game is just so great. I love this, the fairy tale anime, the fact that it is a RPG turn-based combat game. Um, and you know, again, I got an honorable mention, the entire cast, cause they're all great in the game. Uh, it's very well, well, you know, developed and story is really great. And the character interactions are just fantastic. Nice. Good, good list. I like you. You did not leave me disappointed. Very good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Storm, how about you? What are your three favorite characters from the RPG genre of video games? Well, first, I'm going to say, do you have one favorite character from the stick of truth? Um, and it would be the new kid, the character <laughs> that you play, that you take on. I just adored that game. It's so fun and just, I don't know. Yeah, it's worth another go through, maybe. Um, another favorite character is Mallow from Super Mario RPG. He's just cute and I like some of his healing powers and all of that. Um, and my other one is Captain Cliche from Sea of Stars, just because I really love her name and what they did. <laughs> and you don't really get to play with her, but kind of as um. Sarah, whatever. I don't want to. Sarai. Too many spoilers. Sarai, thank you, but I didn't want to like give away spoilers too much. But I know it's an older game, so you know. Um, but I did enjoy her. You know, Captain Cliche. It made me chuckle, and <laughs> yeah, I don't have a big, good, important, big descriptive list. Um, Simbu did well. I these are the only really uh three RPG games that I've played in my lifetime. So no, it's a yeah. it, it, it's well, a good list. I'll I have think. to expand. <laughs> like, like I love those pirates in Sea of Stars because it's like the the one uh the first mate Yvette just would speak in nothing but solilo soliloquies referring to old style JRPGs and other types of tropes. It was hilarious to 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 see. Yes. Sea of Stars is worth like replaying again if if I am motivated enough enough to to do it just because of how how good it is. I almost said was it is it is it is good. Um, Jamie Owls, how about you? What are your three favorite uh, characters in RPG video games? Well, I have to be honest. I don't really play a whole lot of RPGs, but the I, honestly, I don't know if I'm going to even have three characters, but I will have to say that I really love Renoa from Final Fantasy VIII. Um, that is the very first Final Fantasy game I've ever played. And the first time I played it, I had been around maybe 13 when I played it, and I absolutely loved her. She was the reason why I wanted to go from blonde to dark brown hair. Um my second favorite RPG character is probably from the Paper Mario, the ghost. I believe her name was Lady Bo. Yep. <laughs> I thought she was really cute and sassy in the game. I just love her personality. I thought she was a lot of fun. And yeah, though obviously those are the only two because like I said, I don't play RPG games very much. So if you can accept two. Yeah, of course. I know those are those are good picks. I, I definitely knew of your um your your love and appreciation of Renoa, our our mm -hmm. game room uh, is, is a little bit reflected of, of that. So it's no, it's all good. That's a good list. It's funny. I, I remember La Lady Bo. I wonder if uh when we get the paper Mario Thousand Year Door remaster uh later later this year. Yeah, shoot, later this year, I, I could say now. <laughs> Um, yeah. If that's going to be something that you're going to want to uh, play and if you'll find more characters that, that you'll fall in love with there. Oh, for sure. Um, Astromedes, how about you? What are your three favorite characters in, in RPGs? And uh, spoiler alert, I'm betting you'll you'll get a little weird with this. Uh-huh. Um, so 
First, I'll mention uh, Darkest Dungeon 2, which I've played a lot of, and basically has JRPG-style combat. Um, what it does with all the, char- the playable characters is pretty interesting. They're all different classes, but the classes are a bit strange, like Grave Robber is one of the classes. So in Darkest nice. Dungeon 2, they set up, um, each character has a name and they have a very specific backstory. So there's actually random, it's a roguelike game. So you do sort of runs where you may encounter different sort of events. You get to pick kind of one of three paths as you move through. And if you go to these hero shrines, you can actually uncover a piece of their backstory and which unlocks a new skill too. So essentially to get full use of all the characters' abilities, you have to do, I want to say it's maybe five of these shrines for each character. Uh, And they always give a piece of story and some of it is playable and they use the darkest dungeon combat system. So essentially think kind of a JRPG side view where each, each, uh, each uh, combatant is, you know, side view on one side or the other of the battlefield, but they actually set up a scenario like uh, for the grave robber character, whose name is Audrey. She, uh, the first kind of encounter, you see she has a drunk husband and you're changing your position in combat to sort of avoid his wrath and then eventually add poison to his drink. They use like a combat interface to tell the little story about how you're poisoning your abusive husband, basically. So she <laughs> poisons her abusive husband, later needs the money, robs his grave. That's how they kind of give her the name. Robs his grave to get his rings and valuables, and then she becomes the the great the uh, grave robber character who is essentially a kind of roguish, kind of stealth based sort of character. So, but really, all that's essentially really all the characters. I like what they do in Darkest Dungeon. They all have a past sin essentially. So each of their backstory is guaranteed kind of interesting because there's going to be some murder or some shameful event in their past uh, that uh, they're kind of uh, running away from. And that's sort of the theme of the game is kind of like getting over accepting uh, terrible life events is sort of like what I would say one of the themes are. Um, So I I love all the characters in Darkest Dungeon 2. I think they did a really interesting thing with them. Uh, and then, so, uh, my other picks are a little more surface level, but, uh, I'll say, uh, VV from Final Fantasy IX. I haven't played a ton of the Final Fantasy games. I've played more of the old ones. Nine is the newest Final Fantasy game I've played, but it's really <laughs> purely based on kind of the visual design of the character. It was a really neat way to take this kind of almost inherently 2D design of the blue mage or the black mage rather from uh, the original final fantasy and preserve essentially all of its kind of fidelity and design, but present it in 3D. I thought that was just pretty, pretty neat uh, little trick they did. And I don't remember, but I think it's revealed there's he's, he's not a real person or he's a robot oh, or something. Spoiler. I don't remember. <laughs> well, I don't remember very well, so I'm not really revealing anything. And I'll 25 year old <laughs> spoiler alert. Jeez. I'm sure people here could <laughs> correct me <laughs> by giving spoilers. Well, He's not a real person. He's a Jawa from star Wars. <laughs> ah, yes. That was the reveal. <laughs> it's like uh, Orko from He-Man. A lot of people uh, got to mix yep. up with <laughs> the same race, uh, <laughs> but then my so my third pick is sort of just a fun one. I'll say Deckard Kane from Diablo, <laughs> just because uh, <laughs> of the uh, well-known "Stay a while and listen" quote, and it's kind of neat that he's actually <laughs> named after a son of a fan. He's just kind of a weird, enduring kind of like almost relic of a franchise that they've made sure to kind of bring over, just because it seems like just because of the way kind of players loved him and his iconic "Stay a while and listen." For nice good, good list good good uh good picks i think I, I really think like i like the additional subtext that uh that uh darkest dungeon has um but it, obviously with vv that it, that it, they took the boring uh played out black mage style that they've done over and over again and gave it like kind of new life with what how they designed uh him and i i really know very little about diablo myself but I, I do enjoy whenever they are able to put in 
uh, kind of the little Easter eggs and nods to fans and, and others when developing games. And like, uh, obviously there's stories of them doing that for, I uh, forget what game it was. Simba, you might know this, but when uh, Robin Williams passed there, one of the games did something where they re re created a character that was based off of Genie from Aladdin. And it was really based off of Robin Williams. I'm trying to remember which, maybe it was World of Warcraft. It might might have been. Um, oh, if it was World of Warcraft, I didn't play. I don't play World of Warcraft. Yeah, I, I was thinking maybe you, you you heard of the anecdote or something like that, but I I, I want to say it was one of the the MMOs. And thinking about it, probably I knew it was a Western one because there was a couple Eastern games like um, fans petitioned to Nintendo to do something because Robin Williams was a huge uh, Legend of Zelda fan, so much so he named his daughter after Zelda. Uh, but to this day, they've done nothing for that. But it, you know, that's not a surprise. It's Nintendo. So, but regardless, you, the the anecdote you told us uh, regarding Diablo, like, I think that's cool. Like, I, I love when devs do that. Yeah, um, I just fact-checked you. I think it is World of Warcraft. It looks like there's a character named Robin that has a sort of genie-like appearance, it seems. Uh, oh, nice. Yeah, that was yeah. done as kind of a memorial. Yeah, I see. Yeah, I think that, that that kind of stuff is really cool. It shows appreciation to fans because it's a it's a thing where, um, as I've been kind of learning about uh, the difficulties that devs and whatnot uh, have to deal with, kind of a, a small spoiler alert for a future video that I've been that I'm working on. Uh, it's a thing where like the the devs they do listen to us sometimes even a, 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 as pedantic as scrolling and doom scrolling on reddit but they do they do listen uh so uh, i think that's pretty neat uh but i, I feel like rpgs are kind of like the low-hanging fruit for having a favorite video game character and i the only reason i say that is uh rpgs are the kind of games that have the most time invested in them as they often have a, a parallel focus on story along with gameplay uh to that end genres that are difficult to have character growth uh, due to low or no story elements could potentially have or make this difficult to, to find favorites in one type of genre for that would be like the platformer though character development is often made due to having multiple iterative entries in a series and i'll ask you guys who your favorite characters are in platformers and why um i'm gonna cheat here uh my three are luigi Mega Man, and sonic and before you say ask why I didn't say Samus, I consider her to be part of the part of the genre subgenre of Metroidvania or search action. If you don't like the former's nomenclature, my three favorites in the Metroidvania genre are Samus, uh, Simon Belmont, or just I guess the Belmonts as a whole, and then Trace from Axiom Verge. So I'll ask you guys, and don't feel like you have to do three metroidvanias or any crazy crap like that because I, I i i'm i'm crazy i do a whole lot of different genres of stuff uh more general if, feel free to keep it like your fate your three favorite characters in, in platformers and why astromedes since you led us with the last one who uh what are your picks uh, so I definitely don't play a lot of platformers, but uh, I would say kind of in terms of pure platformers, uh, mainly really just based on kind of animation style. And there is some sort of characterization they've added in the cartoon series that they made on Netflix, but uh, Cuphead and Mugman from uh, the Cuphead game, mainly just in terms of kind of like really expressive animations and a really, you know, well-realized style makes them very, uh, it makes the game feel very sort of character-based, which uh, you, you don't feel, is not typically that well executed, I feel, in a lot of indie games that try to sort of make character-based platformers and just character-based games in general. This one succeeded really well, really because of the art style and the uh, execution on it. Um, but uh, I'll say also uh, Wario, I think, is a great character just design-wise. Uh, he is funny. His animations are funny, and it is very well-suited to his game. That's kind of a more more crude but still family-friendly uh, kind of take on, like, a Mario platformer. Um, it's, uh, I think it's it's really well done. He's really well-suited to the game. He's fun to watch. Um, so another Nintendo pick for me is, I'll say, Kirby, uh, in part because I love 
that the Kirby kind of came to be literally from a placeholder drawing that just ended up being cute enough and people became attached to it enough that it literally stuck. I believe they essentially kind of added shoes or more developed shoes and maybe some rosy cheeks, whatever. And that's essentially it other than the minor kind of visual tweaks we've seen him get uh, with higher fidelity systems and all that kind of stuff. Uh, so yeah, the Kirby, as I said, kind of, first of all, like, yes, he's, he's cute it's a good design very well animated and also it's fun to see him you know he switches outfits he still you know looks like kirby but now he's got his little hat on to look like the enemy he just inhaled uh it's a really really good design really strong art style again really well suited the game but also i just think it's hilarious that it was the design is still essentially like say 85 percent the placeholder drawing that they originally kind of put in the game as it was being developed and the fact that they named him Kirby after Jack Kirby, the lawyer that represented Nintendo in the Universal Studios versus Nintendo lawsuit when Universal Studios tried to sue Nintendo for using Kong in Donkey Kong versus Universal's King Kong. They were, uh, the courts ruled in favor of Nintendo, and now we get a character named after the lawyer. <laughs> That's wow. fun. I didn't know that part. <laughs> <laughs> And then so Metroid the sucked up all the information. <laughs> Metroidvania games. Um I'll I'll say Samus. I haven't really played a lot of the most recent Metroid game I've played was I played the first Metroid Prime. Um, but I'll say Samus mainly because of the the reveal in the first Metroid was just really for the time, really uh kind of a neat surprise, like especially at a time where there wasn't a whole lot going on at the end of a game in general. It was kind of neat to just throw a really fun sort of reveal in there. Um and I'll say in general, I sort of don't like to see some of the what feels like kind of sexualization of the character admittedly the, the way they reveal it in the first game is <laughs> doing a lot of that too but i feel like what what i like about the idea of the way they do that reveal is like you know it kind of doesn't matter it's the person in the suit that's kind of able to do all that stuff and essentially it shouldn't matter if they take their helmet off and they're an alien they're sort of like still a hero i sort of like that about what i feel like the you know good less sexist core of like that reveal could mean at the end of a story um but i'll say too uh so from guacamole i think the yes. main character juan Ag Agua aguacate <laughs> I believe his name is, is really well designed. Again, really fun animations. And that game just drips with character. Everything he does feels, you know, exactly like the way a cartoon luchador would do it. Uh, <laughs> it's just really, it's really overall, again, really solid visual design. And um, the animation has a great kind of sense of movement in that game too. It's just really, really well realized, really fun character. Uh, and then I'll say uh, a Lucard from uh, Symphony of the Night. Uh, pretty pretty neat early uh, vampire protagonist, but Symphony of the Night in general, uh, again, it was just it's pretty neat the way they designed. You have that little trail behind you. You've got this kind of – it's a game where you start – you, I feel like in Symphony of the Night, you start and you already feel a little bit powerful. And I feel like that's in part from like the presentation of your character. You're this, you start as this sort of supernatural kind of elevated entity that isn't the normal kind of hero you'd be playing in a game. So I think as a character for that reason, I think uh, LU card's pretty fun. Um, and then uh, kind of a bonus pick I'll mention. I haven't actually played this game but there is this game called the Metroidvania game called Cookie Cutter. I've watched some videos for online and it has really the main character Cherry is a is an android who's uh, whose significant other is kind of taken from her. And the game has a little bit of like a kind of like edgy for the sake of edgy quality to it. But the character design itself is interesting. And again, everything she kind of does feels really kind of full of character. And the game starts with a sequence where you're sort of torn apart and you're literally kind of dragging your half-destroyed android body out of the first kind of starting area. So I feel like that uh, does a really good job of kind of both building the character without having to do a ton of exposition just by kind of showing that. And then also really just kind of like sets the mood for the game and shows you very much that, you know, this is a like half destroyed Android and the way she's destroyed on the outside kind of mirrors the kind of way she's been destroyed by having her significant other taken from her. 
Yeah, it's it's funny. I actually haven't heard heard of that entry before. I'll have to check it out. My bo- my bonus and pointless nugget of knowledge regarding Symphony of the Night is the fact that uh, Konami at the time was developing two Castlevania titles and threw a great amount of the budget into Castlevania 64. They barely had a, any of the budget for Castlevania Symphony of the Night. And it ends up being that Symphony of the Night is the masterpiece level game. And yet, and Castlevania 64 is regarded as one of the poorer outings for the, the 64. It's kind of funny how that, how that is, or that, that works out. Um, Jason, I'm going to, Jason the 13th, I'm going to pick on you. What are your top three favorite platforming characters? And feel free to mention three metroidvania ones as well though not required <laughs> well platformers mega man of course would be my favorite then then the second slot i'm gonna pick a villain to a platformer bowser yeah <laughs> i knew it <laughs> mm-hmm. yep uh for the third one it was i didn't don't know of another favorite platformer but uh in my brain i kept going back to the old old games like the uh Chippendales, DuckTales, all that, and I would have to go with Darkwing Duck for my other one. I knew that coming. I saw that a mile away. <laughs> <laughs> As for Metroid verse, like the Metroid Castlevania type verse games, um, other than Metroid, the only ones that I've really played are like Hollow Knight and if you consider Blaster Master one. Because yeah, it is. I was all about Blaster Master when that came out. So those would be like my top ones for those. So your favorite character is the frog Fred in, in Blaster Master, then, right? <laughs> Actually, I did not know this until I was Googling it. The character driving the the like tank vehicle in Blaster Master is named Jason, which is, is. hilarious. Yep. And, and, <laughs> and the storyline is completely different in Japan versus what we got in the US too. Oh, now that I did not know. <laughs> Yeah, really, really interesting. Uh, Storm, how about you? What are your your three favorite uh, platforming video game characters? Again, bonus for Metrovanias, but not required. All right. For my three favorites, Mrs. Pac-Man. Even though it's like a little puzzler or whatever, you still had to beat Ghost and all that stuff. And, and, and go through and all she, those levels. And Miss Pac-Man was so, in platformer, so that counts. Yes. I was going to say um, the same thing. They had a platform game. <laughs> yep, they did. And Sonic the Hedgehog. Um, I did love the Sonic movies. You know, he's been a favorite background character for, of mine for a long time. And Mario in the Mario Odyssey. I love when he gets to go downtown and has that like swing, whatever, the big band music and all of that. I love that. <laughs> and I love making Mario swim. So I think he became really cute and, you know, extra 3D in Mario Odyssey and just fell in love with him more in that game than any of the others. As far as Metroidvania type, um, there's a character, the knight from Joust, when you get to, you know, the Atari 2600 Joust game, you got to be a knight and ride an ostrich and kill other knights. Yeah, yeah. Just go through several (laughs) levels of that. So that is the closest to one of those I've come to playing myself. So I'm going with him. Those are my answers. No, no worries. Good, good deal on, uh, especially like the Mario Odyssey, man. I, I really hope the what Nintendo's doing for the Super Nintendo Switch is a direct sequel to that because rumors are to be believed. It's it's gonna it's gonna be amazing. We we'll have an amazing 3D Mario game coming down the down the pipe. Ah, you, you see what I did there, Mario mm-hmm. down the pipe. I did. Oh, I'll see myself out. Jamie. Jamie Owls, uh, how about you? What are your three favorite characters in the platformer genres? Bonus for Metroidvanias, though not required. Okay, I know Storm Rose said Sonic, but I'm gonna go with Tails because you know he's a cute little Good fox. Choice. <laughs> yeah, I I like Tails. Um, going back more old school, probably Simba from the Lion King platforming game. Have to add that one, and then, uh. Probably Crash Bandicoot. 
I like um he's a little bit more challenging than uh the Mario games, but I'm gonna have to go with Crash Bandicoot. So it's all animals for me, if you notice. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I definitely did. I, I I know you have a a large love of animals, as evidenced by the many animals that we have around the house, and especially as a, the logo for Inferno Fox Gaming. Yes. <laughs> no, those are those are good picks. <laughs> uh, Simbu, how about you? Your your uh, three favorite characters for platformers and bonus for uh, Metroidvanias, and I, I've heard the Batman Arkham style games are classified as 3D Metroidvanias. So a little little hint for you if you want to go down that rabbit hole. <laughs> Ooh, well then that that will definitely uh, change some of my picks. But for platformers, I'm going to go with the main character from Ghosts and Goblins. Ooh, Arthur, the nice. Knight. Arthur, yep, Arthur. It was it was one of the first horror-ish games I ever played. Um, I enjoyed that. Obviously, we're gonna go with Knuckles from Sonic the Hedgehog. You gotta love, gotta love the echidna. I know the way. Um, and then my third platformer. Now, this is gonna be fun. Jason the Thirteenth. I bet knows who this knows these knows this game. I'm Wacko. I'm Yakko. And I'm not. <laughs> Wacko, Yakko, and Dot from the Animaniacs on Sega Genesis. Oh, I forgot about that game. <laughs> I figured Jamie Owl's already covered Simba from Lion King. Obviously, Lion King, one of my favorite all-time Disney movies. So that's an honorable mention for me. Um, and then an honorable mention with platformers is going to be Cal Kestis from Jedi uh, Outcast and Jedi Survivor. Because while it is a action and more action adventure game, there is heavy platforming mm -hmm. in the game. Um, good, good call, good catch there. <laughs> so for Metroidvania, I'm gonna go with the Knight from Hollow Knight, uh, Samus Aran, obviously first you know big female lead character, you know hero character in all gaming. Um, was really cool to see that real big shocker as everybody are, you know as Ash me has already said um, and then the other Metroidvania I guess we're gonna have to go with Red Hood from the Arkham series that's a good one He's not a playable character but I just love the fact that he is he is just the I don't give up anymore. That's a good <laughs> pick. That is so good. Yeah, it's uh def I definitely need to get back into uh the Arkham series myself, but man, yeah, the, the those are some good picks. Um kind of cruising right, right along here. I was going to have us take a little detour upon sports games, but we're actually uh we're we're running through here, uh, running through uh, some time. You know what? Let, let let's go ahead and touch upon that because this this is going to be fun. Uh, we're going to say our three favorite characters for sports games, and I'm leaving this wide the flip open, allowing any sports game like Madden to Mario series as well as racing. So I'm going to ask you guys who your favorite characters are. My three, my three. Luigi, because I'm always Luigi in Mario Kart. <laughs> Will Smith from NBA Jam. He's a slapping good time. And Bo Jackson from Te Tecmo Bowl and Tecmo, Tecmo Super Bowl. Because <laughs> he was OP. Over <laughs> power. Uh, you, took, you took one of mine because I was going to joke with the Bo Jackson myself. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, who are who are your other two, Jason? <laughs> uh, other than Bo Jackson for sports, um, does Warthog <laughs> from Twisted Metal count? Because oh, yeah, it does. It's a <laughs> I racer. Love I mean, Death Warthog, the big Hummer vehicle. Uh -huh, yeah, <laughs> that would be my pick from Twisted Metal all the time. And other than that, for sports, God, I don't know any specific 
characters. A- Aaron like Rodgers, that. right? You love the Packers. It's Aaron oh, Rodgers. N- no, oh, no, I'm sorry, no. Brett Favre. Brett Favre. It's Brett Favre. Uh, that's no, his brother, no. but okay. <laughs> <laughs> like, I mean, I could name off a couple of sports people, but they're not like my favorites, you know. <laughs> but yep. Yeah, um, yeah, I don't know for a third one. No, it's still good. Uh, my my joke answer was going to be fat guy, medium guy, and skinny guy from NES ice hockey. So you can insert <laughs> one of them. If... And you did technically say three characters, so that could uh-huh. count as your three characters. <laughs> but really, no no King Hippo. You don't want, you don't want to put your vote for. Actually, my my real answer is King Hippo is one of my real answers. He's hilarious. <laughs> Just look at him. <laughs> What yeah, are your I, other I two? picked Sweet Tooth from Twisted Metal because it's a really fun right. character design. Nice. I also decided Twisted Metal was a sports game. Um, and then uh, without a lot of other obvious options to pick, not wanting to pick from one of the other franchises I mentioned, uh, I said Mario the Referee from uh, Tennis, uh, Punch-Out, uh, and wherever else they inserted a couple Mario sprites and made him the referee. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Uh, Simbu, how about you? What are your three sport sports? I'm air quoting for those you, uh, of y'all listening on <laughs> everything. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna go with Team Extreme from WWE No Mercy on the sixty four, which would be Jeff Hardy, Matt Hardy, and Lita. Um, I grew up <laughs> playing W. That was one of the best WWE games ever made. No Mercy, um, yeah, absolutely, yeah. Um, let's also go with a tony hawk pro skater darth maul yeah secret unlockable character <laughs> um and then if we're gonna go a little crazy with sports i'm going to say griff from halo 3 griff ball <laughs> nice quick, it counts quick, inter- quick intervention if you're bringing up fighting games as favorite characters, we'll throw Sub Zero in there for my third. <laughs> yeah, I mean, fight, fighting is kind of its own thing. Fighting's not, not <laughs> boxing, but I. Uh, this genre not represented in this discussion. Yeah. So, <laughs> okay. so I, Jason's the first one to break the rules here. How dare you? <laughs> I dock his pay. Thank you. Thank you. It, it needed to be done. Um, Storm, how about you? What are your three favorite sports characters uh, for video games? Oh, oh boy. That's such a long list. Um, Rosalina in Mario Kart. She's my yes. favorite to use in Mario Kart. Rosalina in Mario Tennis. She's my, also my favorite <laughs> in Mario Tennis to use. And Goofy in Disney Speedstorm is my favorite to use in is these movies are there um i've played a handful of basketball games and i can't tell you anyone <laughs> that's how like into it i was so i don't know and so i'm glad to include those sport those um racers and also you know mario tennis is is a sport and i absolutely love mario tennis so that's a good it, it's a good game good title <laughs> good picks too uh it, Jamie Owls, how about you? Uh, three favorite characters in the sports genre. And again, we're being very open and... and I figure yeah. because I don't play sports both in real life and in fantasy. Um, but I've come up with three. Uh, the Tiny Toons Buster Bust Loose, the football level. Oh, yes. I <laughs> like that one. Um, maybe you guys ever heard of this game, um, Shaq Fu, <laughs> where he fights those characters. Yeah. That that's one a, I played. That's a, a fighting God. game, but I think Shaq makes a count. Yep. Yeah, because he's a basketball <laughs> player. And um, in Spyro, uh, Year of the Dragon, which is the third game, there's skateboarding levels. So skateboarding is a sport, I believe. So. Yep. <laughs> I'm going to go with that. Wasn't there a hockey level in that too? Hockey? Yeah, hockey. But I like the um sport, the the skateboarding one a lot better. Yeah, it was a, a lot more fun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
Nice. That, that, that's good. Uh, but moving back to genres we're a little more used to, let's talk about favorite characters in adventure games. And I, I'm going to include and open up the open world games like Elder Scrolls, like Skyrim and uh, Oblivion, uh, as well as like Horizon, Forbidden West, Horizon Zero Dawn within this as well. And that also includes Legend of Zelda because Legend of Zelda uh, is like the epitome of an adventure game. Uh, asking you guys who your favorite characters are in uh, adventure games. Um, my, my picks are going to be Link from Ocarina of Time because it, I can't just say Link because every, depending on what generation of games, the Link could be different. So the Link from Ocarina of Time includes Ocarina of Time itself, Majora's Mask, and technically has an appearance in Twilight Princess. Uh, I also like Nathan Drake. This is something Jamie Owls got me into. Uh, five excellent excellent games uh nathan drake's one through four plus uh golden abyss it, it, it's like it's essentially watching a movie but with a little bit of gunplay and a little bit of googling the answers to puzzles and then finally uh ghost of tsushima's jin sakai i love the whole uh japanese aesthetic of that um you know, it, it just kind of having that 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 cinematic look and it's even been dubbed in uh japanese if you really want to have that that sort of uh cinematic really beautiful game i might be an idiot and buy it for the ps5 i already have it on the ps4 because of how just how good the game looked on the ps4 uh and supposedly i think it's sucker punch that made it uh sucker punch is working on ghost of tsushima too again supposedly so really ha excited to see what they're gonna gonna do with that but i'll ask you guys and simbu i'm gonna start with you uh, three favorite characters from the adventure uh, genre. Oh, three, three is hard. Three is very, very hard for me. Um, adventure genre is my biggest genre. Um, so I'm going to give you a top five. First and foremost, we're going with Deadpool. From the Deadpool PS4 video game. Number two. We're going to go with Alice. From the Alice the Madness Returns. Game series by American McGee. Which is not getting it's third. Entry which is very very unfortunate. Um, I really really hate that that game. Has been. <clears throat> lawsuited to death. Um, well the franchise has been lawsuited to death. But. If you really enjoy dark horror, you know, Wonderland fantasy, like Alice the Madness Returns, it's an Xbox 360 game, but it is a fantastic series, or is a fantastic game. Um, number three, Kratos from God of War. Who? Because, boy. Who? I don't know. Who's, who, who's Kratos? Don't know. Never heard of him. <laughs> Never heard of them. Um, moving on, we're going to go. Number four is Midna from Twilight Princess. Ooh, good pick. Absolutely loved her character. Very, Absolutely very good pick. Absolutely loved her character. She is by far my favorite character in all of Zelda. Did you read um, the uh, and then Twilight number Princess? five with? Uh, sorry, did you read the Twilight Princess manga? I symbol? did not. You need to borrow that from Jason. I did not. It it is so good and, and expands on Midna's, Midna's character. I am so sorry to, to interrupt. Uh, what was your number five? No, that's that's fine. And number five, because everybody knows I like. Everybody knows I'm a pirate. Edward Kenway from Black Flag. Nice. Good picks. I see. I, I knew you wouldn't let me down on the adventure games, and I I will allow the the top five, and you get bonus points for having such such good picks, uh, extra bonus points for Midna. So very very good. <laughs> and, and and speaking of of Midna, Jason the Thirteenth, what are your top three uh, favorite adventure genre characters? Midna is in there because that is the main reason that Twilight Princess is my favorite Zelda game. Copycat, copycat. I'm taking away points from you <laughs> for copying Simbu. Because he's so mid. Hey, 
She's up there in my top three, not number four. <laughs> but, yep, other than Midna, uh, I would have to go to a Tron Bond from the Mega Man Le- Legends games. I loved her character. And, uh, I wish the third one ever came out, but uh, they canceled all that, so, you know. <laughs> And for three, oh my god, like Simbu said, it is hard to pick a top three. Um, Kratos has to be up there. I know God of War is just such a fun game. So Fair Kratos enough. would have to be number three, I think. Because boy. Uh-huh. But there are so many good ones. Uh, we'll go quick uh, honorable mention out of all the little, like, I. I don't even know if they're PlayStation characters, but uh, Jack and Dexter was my favorite. Over Ratchet and Clank, who are still going strong with new games. I liked De- Jack and Dexter a lot. Yeah, and that series got darker and darker as that, that went along, which is kind, yep. of, kind of an interesting evolution. Yeah, and then they haven't put out a new one, so we'll see if it ever comes back. Yeah. Um, Jamie Owls. How about you? What are your three favorite characters in the adventure genre? For adventure, number one obviously is Lara Croft. She, <laughs> when I think of adventure games, she's the number one I think of. The second would be your pick two, which is Nathan Drake. Um, again, his uh his video games remind me all about um tomb raider they're both similar and i like anything that has to do with archaeology and history and um then my third character i would probably have to pick aloy from the horizon games i find her to be um unique and you know i'm not really into like playing around with robots but i find that the horizon games to be a lot of fun and i really like aloy because you know she's adventurous and smart and badass so <laughs> that's my three pick nice great picks definitely great picks i mean uh I re- all three really embody the whole ad- adventuring kind of a kind of style of play and and just the, their whole journeys that they make on the multiple games that they've all been they've all now been in i could say multiple thanks to uh forbidden west yes Ast- um astromedes how about you what are your top three in the adventure genre i would say uh dante from devil may cry is pretty fun in like a b-movie kind of way uh it particularly i think in like devil may cry one and two like there's this kind of charming maybe at the translation might even help uh, but there's this really charming kind of they I feel like they didn't quite know how kind of cheesy and edgelordy everything comes across. So as a result, it has that wonderful kind of B-movie effect where you can sort of like laugh along with his attitude during a lot of the kind of cut scenes and stuff. But he does have legitimate, you know, characterization, too. And it really works for a game that's literally about, you know, slicing demons and shooting them apart with the most style you can possibly do it. Uh, he's the right character for that. Um, and then I'll say that I I like that in the game Hades, uh, the main character Zagreus, um, I like that they really like kind of carefully picked a real god in Greek mythology that only has kind of like a very limited amount of mythology around him. Like there's not a ton of stories that really have mentioned a lot. There's, I think, essentially no stories that are really about Zagreus so much as there are bits and pieces about uh, Zagreus kind of in a couple other myths myths about you know his his parents uh and his relationship to the other gods and if you look at the way they implemented those things in hades like everything's fairly faithful like they adapted some aspect or took it directly and it's kind of fun that zagreus's background according to the myths is that all the gods actually destroyed him along with the titans and the game is it feels like you're kind of fighting against a bunch of stuff all the gods are throwing at you so it's it's a really neat adaptation uh i think of mythology and then i'll say i only really played 
God of War 1 and 2, but in almost a similar vein to Dante, I think early Kratos was really amusing with his uh, – he never met something he didn't think – that was too big for him to want to kill God or otherwise. Uh, there was, and his, uh, it became kind of a meme among, uh, among a friend group of ours to say Aries when we were mad at something because of how often he <laughs> gets mad at Aries and says it in the early games. <laughs> Don't lie. You just like the save points. <laughs> i just like it when gods are shouting at each other you'll find in a lot of my uh media choices <laughs> oh no it, great picks I, I i like how the whole hades story elements and especially with it just spo supposed to just be this uh you know roguelike how really well developed the story was or would develop how many runs that you end up going through it and uh I, i've only been able to actually beat it beat it to go all the way through from beginning to end once like it's that hard but like even still it, it, i almost had the motivation to keep playing until like it, oh well, you can keep playing but you can handicap yourself to keep playing so you can get more stuff to increase I, i'm like i I beat well, a you one. You can engage time. with the other light dating sim elements in the game yeah. if you replay it. Yeah, I, 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 and it's funny. The only one that I think you can't date in it is the Medusa head because, like, the Medusa head is the only one that actually says no out of all the characters. <laughs> it's really weird. I'm surprised by that. I feel like a lot of people would be interested. I played Hades a decent amount. I think I didn't quite beat it. I think I could not beat the final boss fight, and I meant to come back to it, and I never did. Yeah, because it's freaking pain in the butt. It's like three phases or something. I was like going to say, I think I got to like the third phase and I mm. hoped it was the last one and was worried it wasn't. So I think that's what put me off from trying again. Yeah, because it's like you, you spend because remember when you die, you lose everything. So ugh. Uh, Storm, uh, how about you? Uh, Want to know what your three favorite characters are in the adventure genre? All right. Well, everyone's already picked uh, Kratos because obviously <laughs> he's number one. It just absolutely, I adore that series so much, and adore uh, Kratos right now. I'm going through Ragnarok, and I just got to Asgard with what's his name. That kid is annoying the hell out of me, even more so this round. So, um, but my other Wait, he's not your favorite character. No. No, no, boy, I can't. Mm, no, oh, you Especially love it with, ugh, right now. <laughs> no, no, but I do love Sindri from the same series. Um, and Brock, Brock is oh, he's so foul mouthed. I love him. Uh, Phoenix in the Mortals, Phoenix Rising. I do adore that character. And also, I will go skinny from the wardrobe. The wardrobe is a an adventure game where you're on a picnic with a friend and you die because of an allergic reaction to a plum. And you come back as a skeleton and you are now that friend's conscious. So mm. you get to haunt his apartment and stuff like that. And there's puzzles to find for you to figure out that you're dead and whatnot. And then uh, Brylin from the Pendulous Swing, which is another little adventure game I played on the Switch. You're a goblin who is trying to uh, help put the town back together because it got attacked by orcs and whatnot. And this game was LGBTQ friendly because you are a lesbian goblin who has to marry another uh, goblin <laughs> as part of your quest. So it's very interesting. So those are my my three favorites. Oh, nice! Very cool. Uh, it, it's uh, I haven't heard of the the last two games, but definitely something to check out. Um, but I'm going to kind of play something to your strengths, and when I say yours, I mean all of yours, and not mine, because I'm going to ask you guys your three favorite characters in the horror genre of video games, mm -hmm. and. As we're kind of getting uh, a little close to to the the end time, um, I definitely am curious of, of your three. But 
uh, go ahead and keep your answers su succinct. Um, Jason, what are your three favorite characters from the horror genre? <laughs> Should we start with the obvious? Jason the kill, Jason Voorhees, <laughs> Jason the killer. <laughs> then we'll go to the alien from any aliens game. <laughs> <laughs> And for the third one, hmm, let's see. Oh, that's a good question. Did uh, Friday Thirteenth have a have a horror game? Because I don't remember playing it. But yep. Freddy would be uh, up there. No <laughs> nightmare. Yeah, nightmare before you nightmare on Elm Street did have one. Yes. Yeah, especially ever since the uh, original NES uh, days, with the oddly, um, oddly decent, oddly well developed. Friday the 13th game for the um no nightmare nightmare on nightmare elm street, on elm street. Thank you. <laughs> nightmare on elm street see see my 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 friends in the audience i this is why i'm not gonna have three picks for the horror genre see, i i oh. don't ever recall playing the nightmare on elm street but uh freddy yeah. would be up there along yeah because i i've heard that that the original nes one from L, ljn actually was a, a a good game so that, that there you are um Jamie Owls, who are your three favorite characters from the horror genre of video games? I, excuse me, I'm going to go with Jill Valentine from the Resident Evil series. Um, Ellie from The Last is The Last of Us. Yep. And I don't know if she is considered a horror game character but my i want to go with katana for more to combat counts it yeah, counts. Gore. <laughs> it's got a lot yeah. of gore so yeah gore, katana. Gore. that counts <laughs> no good, good good picks uh astromedes your three picks in the horror genre uh, so I'll say that, uh, in the very not safe for life game, Fear and Hunger 2, there is a character whose name is Torture that turns out to be a kind of former hero that now essentially lives in a dungeon and will either kidnap you and cut your limbs off one by one or make a deal with you and you can kind of turn an innocent person in and he will give you rewards for essentially him to perform his torture on them. Uh, and I will say the the main character in the game Faith, which is kind of an indie horror game that looks like a, like a kind of very early 80s PC game or Atari 2600 game almost. Uh, the main character is John Thomas Ward, and he's a priest that was in a botched exorcism kind of years ago that sets the stage for his attempt to kind of make things right and finish the exorcism of kind of the same entity from that botched exorcism. The, the faith games in general, they just feel like, it feels like you're playing a game made at the time of the first exorcist movie that feels kind of like that old school horror feel to the approach to exorcisms and then last i'll mention there's sort of a visual novel game called slay the princess which i watched a lot of youtube and then eventually purchased just to throw them some money uh but there it turns out that the narrator in this game basically is a character with their own kind of motivations and they're telling you what to do the entire time. So sort of how you respond to the narrator's instructions or commands is sort of how a lot of the gameplay plays out. So I think it's neat. They made the narrator kind of a character in this visual novel game. Nice. Very cool. Uh, Storm, how about you? What are your three top horror video game characters? Number three will be Alan Wake from uh, the Alan Wake series. I've not played the games a lot, but I appreciate the character. So uh, there's that. Uh, number two would be Bubba from Texas Chainsaw Massacre, because <laughs> Leatherface himself. And number one is my boy Jason from Friday the 13th. I hate that <laughs> that video game is no longer supported. I will always cry about it. Meh copyright and all that bs but i absolutely adore that video game so that is my <laughs> my favorite and with it's a little bonus for michael Myers skin showing up in Fortnite, making him a you know a, a little little subsequent point 
of a asterisk on the favorite horror genre of Michael Myers showing up in Fortnite. There you go. Very cool. Simbu, how about you? I want to defer my three till I hear yours. Uh, well, I don't have any because I don't play horror games. Oh, come on. No Doom Slayer for you? I I don't really count Doom as a horror <laughs> game. I just... Yeah, I don't, I don't really play horror games. <laughs> All right. So we'll go ahead with number three, and that is Slimer from Ghostbusters Spirit Unleashed. Oh. By all technicalities, it is a horror game, even though it's, you know, action, whatever, blah, blah. Um, number two is going to be Danny from Dead Island 2. I love her as just the Irish, Scottish, take no BS, and just her her whole attitude throughout the game is great. Uh, number one is a tie. And that would be the Nightmare from Dead by Daylight, which, as anybody who knows, is Freddy Krueger. And Isaac Clark from Dead Space. Ooh, good picks. Good picks, yeah. it's Because it, you just played Dead Island 2 last year, too, right? When that came out? Yep. Nice. Uh, you know... I, the only thing that I can think of horror wise is the original NES when my brother subjected me to watching the Grim Reaper appear on Shadowgate and this creepy music would play and it shows the Grim Reaper holding the scythe and you see like the sun setting or something like that. And the text is always like really gruesome stuff. It, it terrified me enough. So, you know. All childhood trauma aside, that's the only thing I could really think of. I think that qualifies, though. Shadowgate, I'd say, was a horror game. That's what it was going for with its kind of presentation. Yeah, I, I, I suppose, although, you know, it was more to, to torture me, but I, I, it, it still counts. It was weaponized against you. Absolutely. And, and, and while we're thinking deviously, let's end things with our three favorite <laughs> villains. And these are the ones that you just either love to hate or you just love to love. You know, no no judgment here. I uh, want to want to know who your three favorite villains are. I'm going to pick uh, Kefka from Final Fantasy VI. I am breaking my rule of having no double franchises and saying Sephiroth from Final Fantasy VII and Ganondorf from the Legend of Zelda series. By far, some of the evilest of evil villains that you just love to hate, to love, to love, to hate. Storm, who are your three favorite video game villains? Robotnik, B1. Dr. Bowser. Robot. Yep. <laughs> Bowser and Wario. And my number one favorite villain are the Pac Man ghosts because they're oh. little buttheads. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Good picks. Good picks. I, 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 I like. <laughs> Thank you, uh, thank you. Simbu, who are your three top three villains? I think you already said a villain earlier, if I remember right, maybe. I've said a couple villains, but not my favorites. My number three is Venom from Spider-Man 2. He was a fan, he was fantastically done. Um Number two is going to be the Wendigos from Until Dawn. Oh, God. Oh, see, I didn't see, I, I didn't play that, but I'm watching Jamie Owls play that. That's a good one. Also, I want to tie number two with the brother from Until Dawn, the, the <laughs> brother of the, of the twins. I want to tie him there because by all technicalities, he was one of the villains of the game. Yep. Um, And then, of course, number one, Gonna throw it out of left field for everybody here. The psychos from Borderlands. Really? They hmm. are hysterical. If you ever play and listen to the psychos, the nonsensical stuff they scream and yell at you as, as they charge is just hysterical. <laughs> nice. Good list. Uh, Jamie Owls, who are your three top three favorite villains? 
Uh, number one for me will have to go with Lady Dimitrescu from Resident Evil 8, the tall vampire lady. <laughs> uh, the Mommy. second one, I was on a cross between these two, but I'm going to have to go with the little Koopa Troopas. Aww. I think they're so cute. And my third favorite, I only played the first game, but it's from Evil Within. Um, it's called Laura. She's just like the spider woman that has oh, like this long hair and this, all these arms coming out of her. Yeah, that would be my pick. Yeah, it's a good villain. <laughs> good picks. Uh, Lady Dimitrisco, yeah, you get, get, but then you get all the the people with the fetishes that like to follow and wanting to be stepped um, on. And... That's not why I picked her. So <laughs> just to clarify, yeah, that's, that's why not Jason why the Thirteenth picked her. Picks her. Yeah. There's not many very, there's not many female villains. So yeah, so that's why I picked her for that reason. And it was a good villain too, a very yes, very good villain. Was. Um, speaking of Jason the Thirteenth. What are your top three villains? Well, uh, all of them have basically been brought up and mentioned before. And I, I brought up two of them myself in my other favorites. <laughs> uh, Bowser, Tron Bon, uh, Seth Roth is up there in the tops. Um, I don't know if you one that I haven't brought up yet. And I don't know if they're technically villains the big daddies from Bioshock. I know you have to battle them. I don't know if they're actually villains, though. Like, I don't know if you'd consider them a villain. I, su um, I suppose, I mean, they're means to an end. They, they get into the main protagonist's way of, or, or pathway. Obviously, right. the game, you know that there's more to the story of why they're there, but yeah. I'd say uh, they count. Yeah, I could count that. All right, that works. Like I said, in the two of them I've already brought up. You brought up Sethroth, which is top tier villain up there, and then I'll throw the big daddies in there. <laughs> nice. Yeah, good good list. Uh, Astromedes, what are your top three villains? Uh, I would say... Uh, so I just finished, uh, well, not just finished, I'm actually still playing it. I've been playing that inscription game, uh, kind of horror, sort of first person presented, but it's really kind of like a card game sort of thing. Uh, the character Leshy, who basically is the kind of first and main sort of boss of the game. He kind of keeps you in sort of like what feels like a weird kind of escape room scenario where you're sort of trapped in his cabin. Presentation's really good. You usually can only see his eyes as he plays different characters. He puts different kind of like masks on. It's You see his hands kind of come towards you and he takes a picture of you when you die to commemorate you. Um, <laughs> so it's really kind of cool, creepy presentation. He's pretty fun. Um, and then uh, the same game I mentioned earlier, uh, Slay the Princess. It's a visual novel game where the concept is you are handed a dagger and told, walk in that cabin and slay the princess by the narrator. But you get a lot of choices, including questioning the narrator. The choices kind of change throughout as you play it. But the princess is essentially presented as the villain. In many playthroughs, she becomes a literal monster, which is purportedly why the narrator is telling you to kill her. Um, so as a kind of villain, she's interesting because you're not quite sure if she really is the villain or not and i probably could have switched the narrator and the princess arguably as maybe one is the villain and the other isn't it's hard to tell but the presentation is pretty interesting and i like the kind of complete subversion of the trope where kind of it's almost like the main character is the helpless one and the princess though chained in a basement is actually kind of an all-powerful monster um and then uh, last and sort of like most memorable from uh, my younger years, I always thought Calypso from t the Twisted Metal series was very fun as kind of a villain. Just he's created this uh, death car combat contest, somehow has the resources slash power or something to grant anyone's wish, essentially. And it's just kind of a fun sort of the world has gone insane kind of villain. <laughs> 
Oh, th- yeah, de- definitely good picks. I, I I like the whole uh flipping the script idea with Slay the Princess. I think that's a I love when video games can do that. And I can always rely on you to to not only give us these kind of uh games and game ideas really for us to play, but also have really interesting picks and reasons why you pick them. So shoot, thank, thank you for that. I definitely have a, a number of games to check out. I just and talk an, a lot. <laughs> and, and and also a number of games for you, the audience to, to check out. And uh, just a huge thank you, of course, to our fantastic cast and crew here as we just kind of, this is also helps to, as a kind of get to know you, get to know your, your podcaster, as you, you kind of have an idea as to what our preferences are, the type of games that we play, what we know, what we don't know, and, and uh, where you, we play to our strengths and, and everything like that. That's why one of the, the many reasons why I felt like this was a, a, a really good topic and why we all uh, wanted to, to jump in on this. So again, huge thank you to our cast and crew as we uh, are doing our outro here. Just want to, of course, thank my partner and partner in crime, Jamie Owls87, Jamie Owls, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me. And we've got Jason the 13th of the YouTube channel, Jason the 13th, who will not have any new content on his channel of Jason the 13th until he gets his poor laptop back from the masterminds over at Micro Center. And I gave him a little blow him up on Twitter or X. Yes. Uh, while I did give them a little bit of a hard time, they, they do have a lot of quality parts and everything like that for computers. If you're building your, your computers, that's Micro Center, located 80 East Ogden, Westmont, yeah. Illinois, 60559. You cannot go get any better than the deals you can find at Micro Center. Unless you can. <laughs> Jason, thank you so, so much for joining us. <laughs> Sponsored now, huh? <laughs> yeah. We okay. wish. Right. Uh, not a problem. I love enjoy being here. And Micro Center is a real good store, even though they are swamped in their tech department right now. So, yes, absolutely. And we of course have Storm Rose Sky of the Twitch and YouTube channels of Storm Rose Sky. Storm, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. And always great to have you with us, too. We also had Simbu Darkfang, our level five grandpa, the best fork knife player for fork knife BRs. And, and that's BR, Battle, Battle Royale, not B. Arthur. Although I wouldn't put it past fork knife to put B. Arthur and the rest of the Golden Girls in it. And finally, you can find Simbu Darkfang at Basement of the Dead, located in Aurora, Illinois. That's Chicagoland's Basement of the Dead. Simbu, thank you so much for joining us. Hey, it's always a good time. Absolutely. And last and certainly not least, Astromedes, the developer and co-owner of Second Place Games. Astromedes, thank you so much for joining us. Glad to be here. Looking forward to bringing some more weird game picks in 2024. Absolutely. That's not a problem. <laughs> and final thank you to the audience for joining us as well you can of course catch us again here on youtube as well as on apple podcast spotify amazon music and more and we will catch you guys next week most likely on wednesday normally we do have new episodes posting on tuesday evenings thanks again and have a good one